Hello YouTube, it's Jules again, Judge JCB, bringing you another video on the Nacon Revolution. Uh, today I finally figured out how to do a screen recording. Uh, and I'm sorry I haven't uploaded for a while, I had a little accident and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I accidentally drilled through uh, the nail on my thumb. Ah, sorry I showed you that, because you didn't really need to see that. So basically I'm just going to take you through the basics on this. I have made other videos on how to set up the controller and also you'll see, uh, so when you go in, you press click on there, there is a separate bit about the macros. I have made a video just on the macros. I'm not going to cover that because that took a while. I would suggest watching it because the macros are a massive part of this controller and why you would want to use it. So when you first get on, you have all of this. It's, uh, you know, maybe looks a bit confusing. Uh, but it is actually very, very simple. So, uh, you've got your different profiles on this side. So, as you know, on your controller, yeah, you need to have this set onto mode 2. Uh, so, you have your red ring lit up. Okay? And then, with this, you just want to make sure that it is on the fourth one. So, if you press the mode button... Uh, you should have the light lit up on the fourth one across. So you've got one, two, three, four, and then you're ready to go. So for this one, I'm going to have the macros turned off. Um, well, rear shortcuts, that's your M1, M2, M3, M4, needs to be on. Backlight on, vibration on if you want it, and that's the basis of it. So you've got your right joystick. So we'll start there because it's at the top. And this is how it come. I was pretty happy with this. Uh, I would leave it at that. And then you can adjust it as you go along. Um, so the static dead zone is basically um, your dead zone. If you make it bigger, I'll show you what happens. You get a little circle. And in that little circle, wherever you move your joystick in that circle, nothing will happen. Okay, so I have mine on about two. Because sometimes what you find is that you get a bit of drag, so basically, if your controller gets a little bit of whatever in it, it can get a little bit stuck. So I leave it at about two just to make sure the controller doesn't move on its own. And then you've got small, medium, and big, okay? And that's responsiveness for a small movement, okay? So for a small movement, my responsiveness is 33 out of, I assume, 100. So let's, let's have a look. Oh no, it's out of 64. So in all in all of it, it would add up to 100. So let's get back down to 33. I've done well with that. So leave it at that. And yeah, you can have a play around with it. I'd suggest finding something, depending on what game you're playing. I'm going to be setting this up for, say, Battlefield today. So I'm going to leave that like that. Let's just have a save there. Once you saved it, you can then come out. Going on to triggers, and basically the triggers are, you can make them more sensitive. For something like a shooter, you can have your 100%, okay, at 50%. So you've only got to press the trigger 50% in order to be full-on shooting, okay, uh, which is fine. You can do that, or you can have this, can be like at 33%. So... That would mean you'd have to press your trigger 33% for an order for it to start. I don't know why you would want that, but there must be some games that you can do that on. I find this better than trigger stops on other controllers, because when you get trigger stops on, and then you want to play a car game, you have to take the trigger stops off. But you can set this up, so basically, you know, you can have 50% is full shooting, no gaps, no breaks. Nothing to worry about, and that's the same. Both controls, you can set up both sides, both triggers uh, to be at whatever you want them to. So it end at 50%. That will be the highest. So that will be a really small squeeze will give you maximum sort of press. Uh, and we're going to save that and save that because I don't really use it. So next, your mapping. This is the important bit. Okay, so everything is mapped out on the screen as you see it. The shortcuts are on, the macros are off. That must be the case unless you have set this up for macros. Okay, we're going to go on to macros in a minute. So basically, 
if I click on X, at the moment, X is X. But for some reason, if I wanted X to be circle, I could have it as circle. I'm going to keep it as X. M1. Okay, so on your back is highlights the M1 button. So if I wanted M1 to, on Battlefield, if I wanted to drop a medi pack, I'd use me left or right on the D-pad. So I tend to have one as my left, one as my right, one as my crouch down for M3, and the other one, maybe jump or something else. And then that's it up. So now on my back buttons, if I want to drop me medi pack, I can click M1. If I want to get me mortar out or something, I can press M2. That one there. And then if I want to jump, I don't then have to move my fingers off of these onto here because I've got them all mapped out. So I can just click jump and crouch down without having to move my fingers off. So I can aim and crouch at the same time. That's basically what that's for. Remember save and come back out okay so so far we've done the joystick we've done the triggers we've now mapped it and the macros i'm going to quickly do it you could go on macros modify it. and i'll tell you what i want for some reason maybe a fighting game i want uh me square button which might be a kick plus pressing me circle button which does a spinning high kick okay so that plus that and then you add it, okay? And then you save it, and that's my M1, okay? So when I've done that, I upload it. I might need to go back to mapping, and then I'd have to turn my macros on, okay? So that would then disengage this stuff here. Instead, I'd have my M1 macro on, okay? But like I said, there is another video to take you through all of that sort of stuff. I am going to leave my macros off because I want this stuff on this controller. Uh, and then you've got your controller profiles. So I've got one for Battlefield, one for Timefall, a normal one which I downloaded from the download profile section. And then I've just set myself up another Battlefield one. But I only use these two at the moment. Okay, so that's that. My profiles currently on Battlefield 1. You can download some profiles. Continue download surfer. Please wait for my... So basically there's some uploaded and you can download other people's profiles. So let's have a look at uh, Destiny. Let's have a look and we can download that. It's downloading. It's going to take ages. Uh, guys, please give me a like and subscribe and any more videos that you would like, mate, because there's only so many videos I can make on the uh, Nacon controller. So, yeah, any more ideas on anything you'd like to see, then, yeah, give us a, give us a uh, suggestion. Okay, so this has now um, done it for Destiny. No, it hasn't. What's that? Maybe I've done it somewhere else. Uh, has it done a Destiny one? Uh, I'm not too sure that it has. Okay, so it has downloaded it. I'm not sure where that's gone, but... You get the gist, you might have to have a little play around with the download profiles because I'm not sure where it's done it. Nacon profiles. Ah, so Nacon profiles. Ah, there you go. It's done it. So then you download the file, then you go to your Nacon profiles, and then you click on it, and then you can have a look what we got here. Yeah, and it's downloaded somebody else's Destiny profile. So now I now don't even own Destiny anymore, but I've now got it downloaded as my number four. Save and come out so that I mean guys that's pretty much it. it is fairly simple um there's nothing much to it this controller is really good i've heard people talking about their controllers their pro controllers and they've had trouble with trigger stops and then switching games this is really simple you plug it into your pc and you get what you want it's going to be supported in the future with different stuff coming out and there was a question about the macros quickly asking if i could change my m1 and map it to um, the bumper buttons, you can't make your bumper buttons the M1. Not as far as I have found. I have been playing around with it a hell of a lot. So guys, thanks for watching, and speak to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe.